Germans increasingly want to use the sun as a source of power and are installing solar panels on their roofs. But what happens when the sun isn't shining? A German company called Sonnen thinks it has the answer. It already has 10,000 subscribers in Germany and wants to expand to Austria, Switzerland and even Australia. A company invented a system for sharing the solar-powered electricity. Let's see how that works. Solar panels now adorn the roof of Ingolf Pernus's house in southern Germany. They produce enough electricity to power his home and share with others. Not only with large power companies, but also other private households. It's called power sharing. In the cellar, a battery stores any excess production. Ingolf Pernus can see on his computer just how much electricity his panels have generated and how much he's used. Sometimes he has to draw on other people's power, but usually he has enough to share. When I generate a lot of electricity, because the sun just happens to be shining here, but perhaps not in Bavaria or other parts of Europe, then my excess energy can be channeled there. It's a great concept. At 40%, renewable electricity is already an important component of Germany's power mix. But until recently, it was hard to distribute privately generated power. The Zonnen company is trying to change that. It makes batteries which store the solar power. 10,000 households here are already hooked up to the Zonnen network. The map shows where they're located. The company also wants to move into Austria and Switzerland. Sharing electricity is relatively easy. It's pretty easy in Germany. We've got a system where everyone can use the electricity grid. The same as everyone who's got internet can use a variety of telecommunications connections. That means we pay network operators to use the grid. That means at any point in Germany, we can generate electricity as well as supply it. The system turns house owners with solar modules mounted on their roofs into power providers. Ingolf Pernus is now both a regular consumer and power utility. On top of that, he saves money, cutting his electricity bill almost in half. Not least because he's now independent of the large energy concerns. The most satisfying aspect, of course, is that we're making a small contribution to climate protection and limiting carbon dioxide emissions. That's the most important thing. And yes, making a financial saving on the side, at least once the plant has been running for years and paid for itself, that's a welcome side effect I'm happy to take along. His household is only one example of sharing climate-friendly electricity. Plenty of others could soon be joining the system. So now we visit the Bayaka of the Congo Basin. These pygmy people live in the Central African Republic and like many indigenous people, they see their culture under threat by outside influences. That is why the Bayaka, old and young, have come together to preserve the law and knowledge of their ancestors. How are they doing that, Sharon? For thousands of years, the Bayaka have lived with and from the rainforest. They have always treated the forest with care because they see themselves as part of it, preserving it as part of their cultural heritage. The Ndima Kali group is trying to carry that tradition on into the 21st century. Ndima means forest in Bayaka. Kali is the word for river in Sango, a widespread indigenous language in the region. Here on the Sanga River, in the southwest of the Central African Republic, this boat is on a kind of rescue mission. The rescuers call themselves Dima Kali, and they want to save the culture of the Bayaka and Tsanga people. The group makes regular trips to the rainforest to keep the ancient wisdom of their people alive. The main purpose is to learn about the forest and its spirit which they have to ask for permission to enter.
They learn through observation, guided by Jean Bolokoa, one of the few people who still has the ancient knowledge. Children, look at this bark. If you boil it in water, the water turns red. Drink it. It's good for a stomachache or sore throat. For thousands of years, these communities have lived sustainably, taking only what they need for food and medicine from the woods and the river. The members of Dima Kali are trying to preserve this archaic way of life in modern times and to protect the forest. They're supported by nature conservation organization WWF. The rainforest in the Congo Basin is under threat. Timber companies are logging, poachers killing wildlife, mines destroying the landscape. And modern life is making inroads into even the most remote villages, replacing the age-old traditions of Central Africa. Marshal Betole heads the group. He's well aware of the dangers that poses. Technology has impacted culture. Most young people just want to listen to the music they hear on the radio. They go to the village to hear music, instead of sitting together round the fire, like their ancestors did, playing drums, singing and dancing. This rainforest camp is the main gathering place for Dima Kali. They've produced a book about the forest's medicinal plants. The group visits schools in the region to remind more children and young people about the close ties their ancestors had to the forest. The forest makes our children strong. When a Bayaku goes abroad and returns, he has to go into the forest to connect with his culture again. The forest is everything to us. It grows our medicine and food. The forest is our city. Tree climbing skills are also part of the Bayaka's heritage. In the forest canopy, they find honey and caterpillars, which they can harvest time and again without chopping down the trees. But for these teenagers, it's not just about protecting the environment. If you can't climb a tree with the rope, you won't get a woman. But if you can climb up to the top, you can get all the young women from the village. The man is only worth something if he can climb a tree. I couldn't love a man who couldn't do it. It's also fun and makes Dima Kali more attractive to young people. The day in the forest ends with traditional dances. One boy has symbolically transformed into the spirit of the woods. They dance the boyabe, which was traditionally performed the evening before a hunt. But these young people aren't going hunting. They're heading back to their homes. And once they've left, the spirit of the forest returns to the quiet green space beneath the trees. So there's plenty of people doing their bit for the environment all over Africa and in Europe. But that's all we have time for today. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, it's goodbye from Nairobi. And goodbye from Lagos, Nigeria. If you want to know more about us, follow us on our social media pages. We will be back next week, same time. Until then, Thanks for joining us for our Pan-African and European Environmental Show. Bye-bye.